bilingual since I first started speaking, and English was my second language. I came to this school not knowing a word of English, and it was really hard at first. I remember my first day at Thatcher when I walked into the class and just stood next to my teacher all day because I couldn't communicate with any of the other kids. I even remember some of my classmates chasing me around and trying to find a way to communicate with me, but ultimately failing. Eventually, I learned English and made some friends, one of which I still hang out with to this day. One thing that always stuck out to me was the reaction that I got from people when I explained my school to them. Family, friends, or other people would always ask what school I went to, and I would explain to them that I went to a small private school in Milton, and I would also explain how there were only about 26 middle schoolers and how we had a dog roaming free in our class. I have two sides to myself. I have my, my fun, weird, crazy side and my more serious, smart, and philosophical side. So I decided to split up my speech likewise because I couldn't just choose one, I had to be extra. So I'm just going to start off with my serious speech. I started this school a whole eight years ago and now it's ending today. I have lost many things in my journey here. I have lost something almost every year. And in eighth, I'm losing this school, my friends, and my teachers. But with all these experiences, I have gained so many things with the loss of so many others. I have gained new friends, I have gained new experiences, I have gained new perspectives, and I have gained a better understanding of how things work. This school has helped me sort out my life in a scale, and I've probably had equal amounts of good and bad, and sometimes they can't outweigh each other, but I just have to get over it. Naturally, I was thinking about what my speech would be. Over this time, I decided one thing, that I wanted my speech to be original, that I didn't just want it to be another thanks and goodbye. But as I was sitting here writing this, I realized something, that I'd rather have my speech really mean something to me than have it be some joke-filled blur built to appease the audience for a few minutes. But thanks to Adam and Griff, these have been my most enjoyable years at the school, and my experiences here will always be with me. I have to thank Todd for being so dang cool and not putting up with anyone's whining, Sally for making science my favorite subject, Megan for everything you do to us, do, do for us. <laughs> that was an actual mistake, I promise. It's overwhelming. And despite how gratifying it might be, you just want to crawl back to what you're used to. In the past, this would have been me, running away from my fears. But what this person said stuck with me for a reason. Hiding from what's different will only make you visible to what's weakened. And what this place has taught me is to not only fight through my fears, but overcome them. I most certainly, from the bottom of my heart, do not want to leave this place. But I know now the strength, confidence, and inspiration this school has allowed me to gain, and understand that these qualities will not only help me to, to overcome these challenges, but stay with me for the rest of my life. You simply can't put that into words. You can't put this school into words. For so long I've thought about this moment, and I hope I told my story well enough. Okay. The final and most important thank you goes to my parents, mom and dad. I know that this hasn't been the easiest year and I haven't been the easiest child, but I want you to know that your efforts and everything you've done for me have not gone unnoticed. I'm thankful for every day. I'm thankful every day for both of you. I'm even grateful for the things that you don't let me do. I guess now I'm supposed to say goodbye. Again, how do you say goodbye? I don't want to say goodbye because everybody knows that the hardest part of saying goodbye isn't the goodbye itself, or even the part where you walk away. It's the part where you have to live without that person, place, or thing that you're saying goodbye to. And besides, saying goodbye implies that I won't be seeing any of you again, and I don't plan on that. I think I'll say have a nice day instead. <laughs> So, have a nice day. Thank you. I am bilingual in Spanish, and although only about 15 people will understand what I'm saying, muchísimas gracias, Elisa, por cada una de nuestras sesiones de chisme y por enseñarme cómo usar los acentos. Espero que mi próxima profesora sea tan simpática como tú. Ms. Mills, Renee, and Victor, thank you for being so patient with me and showing me how important the arts are. I would also like to thank Todd. In sixth grade, he asked me to play basketball for the AP team, and I'm so happy I said yes. Playing basketball with all my amazing teammates has been so much fun.
Two years ago, the girls' basketball team got to the semifinals and lost. But this year, with the best coach we could have asked for and the best cheerleader, Dylan Seiler, we won the championship. This experience have brought, has brought me closer to many people on the team. So thank you, Todd, for sparking my passion for basketball, taking us to the championship, but most importantly, being a great friend. And honestly, it has become my home. I have spent probably over 50,000 hours in this school, and I believe it has been worth it. I remember each year I graduated. I always cried for the first few days of summer because I thought that my last class was the best class ever. But I ended up always having more fun in the next classroom. I've ha I have had so many favorite moments in this school that I will only tell you a few. My first favorite moment is in children's house. Every day I would sit at the same table and look out at Wakefield, always wanting to go over. And one day we got to go and take a nature walk. And I remember finding a deer antler. My next favorite moment was in LEB, but wasn't really a moment. It was more like an everyday thing where me and Isabel would always wanted to beat the human boss because we thought we were animals. My next favorite moment is in UEA, where me and Cameron went almost every day around the school finding circular objects to find the area. And my last favorite moment was this past Odyssey. You're fine. I keep telling stories about me being scared and not wanting to do things, but it's because AP taught me to go out of my comfort zone and be brave, and I did a lot of that on the Odyssey. I could keep telling stories, but I also want to have time for thank yous. I'd like to thank Adam and Griff for being awesome and funny teachers and putting up with my constant whining. You guys made the adolescent program amazing. It was always a new experience every day, and I wish I could do it all over again. Thank you, Sally, for being the most understanding and patient teacher I know. Thank you so much for explaining to math to me. Thank you so much for explaining math to me when I didn't understand and giving us the most fun science project ever. Gracias, Salisa. Tú eres la mejor maestra de español. Even though she had to check that before I came up here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Todd, for being an awesome gym teacher. Even though I hated being active, you still did a great job, and you were really easy and fun to talk to. Thank you, Victor, for telling me not to give up on music, and you taught me so much about, about it, and I learned that you always need patience to play an instrument. Thank you, Megan, for giving me a great part in the play and letting me help you with everything. I know I wasn't the easiest of students, but I really tried. I remember going to my first ever Thatcher graduation here in first grade, watching all of the eighth graders giving their final goodbyes, crying into one another's shoulders, and wishing each other the best in high school. My first thought while seeing this take place was, why are they all crying? There's no reason to. <laughs> Man, if only my younger self could see me now. My second thought was, oh my god, I'm going to have to do that when I get to eighth grade. Maybe I can get out of it. <laughs> my first grade self obviously did not understand the importance of an eighth grade speech. This happened about every year after that, until last year. Watching my friends give their final goodbyes was heartbreaking to me, mostly because I spent a whole year in a classroom with them, getting to know them. I finally understood why so many tears were being shed over the years, why everyone was always so sad. It finally hit me after about being here for eight years of my life. Eight years of creating bonds with so many people that now means so much more to me. Now, having, say, having to say goodbye to those people is even more heartbreaking. You might know me as an AP student, band man, a musician, an artist, ox, red guy, and probably some other ones too. Most people who know me know that I'm moving to Wisconsin after this year. If you didn't know that, that's impossible because I just said it. <laughs> because of the move, my speech will probably turn out being not just for Thatcher, but for everyone I've known in all the time I've lived here, or something like that. Anyway, I'd like to share some memories of my time here. I remember one time I got up in the morning and came to school. I walked in the doors, and I didn't know how this place would change my life. When I first began Thatcher, I didn't understand how lucky I was to have the opportunity to go to a school that allowed so much freedom and independence. It allowed me to explore the areas of study that I was passionate about. And at a young age, Thatcher helped me to develop a strong passion for helping the environment. I didn't understand how lucky I was to go to a school where I could be who I wanted to be without worrying about people judging me. Because at Thatcher, you're encouraged to be different than everyone else and to be your own unique person. I didn't understand how lucky I was to go to a school that was as amazing as Thatcher. Instead, I would like to thank the one person in my life who has always been there when I need them most. The one person who without them, I would not be standing up here today. Thank you, Mom.
My fondest memories of my time at Thatcher was my declamation in seventh grade, a speech we had to give to the class. I chose Patton's speech to the Third Army from the movie Patton. For those, of you who have, for those of you who have seen the movie, or even just a clip of the speech, you know it was probably one of the least appropriate speeches I could have done, especially considering the assignment was to make a speech about peace. The speech has lines like, men, all the stuff you've heard about America not wanting to fight, wanting to stay out of the war, is a lot of horse dung. And that's probably the most appropriate line. When I asked if I could do that speech, I expected Adam Griffin Megan to say no, absolutely not. They did just the opposite. When I finally gave the speech, Every single one of my classmates had looks that ranged from amusement to fear on their faces. <laughs> the point of that story was not to highlight my classmates' reactions or to show that you can make a provocative speech in school. It was to point out that no matter what, my teachers and my classmates and everyone else I met along this journey was behind me. I'm going to miss it here. I'm going to miss the eyes of my friends lighting up with laughter and the frantic energy that engulfed the entire class the day before a project was due. I'm going to miss going into the music room and playing piano until I realized I was late for class. I'm even going to miss the tragic and pointless struggle of closing my broken locker. <laughs> when last year's eighth graders were leaving, it seemed like all anyone wanted to talk about was the past. I thought it was strange. Of course, I wasn't the one leaving everyone else behind. Now I know. When people reminisce before they move on, they're trying to impress the memories into their mind, brand them there somehow. Thank you for being my safe haven, the place where I always knew I was welcome, the place that holds my happiest memories, my saddest memories, and everything in between. I regret a lot of things. I regret more than I should. But I will never, ever regret coming here. Thank you, Sidra. Could I ask for a round of applause for all of our speakers?